If you want to see what I can do with some leeks, some parsnips and an old piece of ivy vine, then stick with me. it's the morning, it's the evening or it's the afternoon. Welcome to today's demonstration. It's really lovely to be back after the manic summer season. It's great to be back finally doing some more YouTube videos and today I'm looking at something that was introduced here in the UK in the 1980s. It's called a parallel arrangement and I'm going to do it with a minimal quantity of flowers, but I'm going to introduce some vegetables so that it has a little bit of a harvest or a Thanksgiving feel. It would be ideal for you to use as a church decoration or for a flower arrangement for the home. And I'm going to use some fresh material and some dried material as well. So there's a whole host of exciting flowers in today's design. Whether you're a beginner, or whether you're a little bit more experienced, hopefully this design will be something that you'll be able to create for yourself. If you haven't been here before, hello and welcome. My name is Sharon and I'm from Sharon Dower Flower School and I teach lots of workshops and classes, lots of them online. So if you want some information about courses, you can email me on the address below, sharondower at hotmail.com or you can go and look at the website, sharondower.com. But let's get started. So my container is this long, thin base. It's not too deep, maybe an inch in height. It's used in up just a little bit more than one and a half blocks of foam. Now, the reason I've left the gap here in the center is because I wanted to explain to you that for this type of design, you could even sit a potted plant in there. So if you were doing a springtime theme, you could sit a pot of polyanthus or a pot of daffodils or tulips in the gap there. I could have filled the whole container if I wanted to, but I knew that the choice of flowers that I've got today doesn't warrant having a whole container filled with floral foam. Now what I'm going to do on the top of the foam is to cover it using some ivy root. Now this would have originally been growing up a building or out, you know, an outbuilding like a shed or a garage. It's been cut down, I've salvaged it. It was originally a really long piece and I've cut it into several sections. You can use it in this manner so that it covers your floral foam or you can use it in the manner I'm going to and I'm going to sit it on top of the foam to give me some interesting groundwork. And that'll mean that I won't have to cover the foam with so much flowers and foliage. So I've attached here two wires and they're going to help support the ivy root there in the base. And this time of the year, you might have fallen bits of bark and branches. You could have some lovely eucalyptus bark that's fallen down. So anything with those long horizontal sort of lines would work perfectly well. I've got two, so I'm almost going to layer them on top of one another. And um, what I have to think about and what I have to consider is that my flowers for the parallel lines are going to somehow fit in between the gaps of my ivy root there. So hopefully you can see that. Gives lots of texture, lots of interest at the base. If I wanted to, I could introduce another piece along the front there, but for today, I'm going to use some foliage to int introduce some contrasting colors and textures. Right, so parallel design is a design that has vertical, horizontal or diagonal groups of material placed in in a parallel fashion. So we're not radiating our stems out, we're placing them, in my case, vertically in the design. And I'm going to start with some birch. You often see me use birch and I've always got it here to use and to play with. And I've created some height. That's about one and a half times the height of my container. And I think that's going to work quite well as a proportion for my height. You could go taller if you wanted to. And what I'm going to do with these is place them in those parallel lines. So they're all going straight up, fairly equidistant from top to bottom. And it's almost like a tree would be growing in the garden or growing in the woodland. It's straight, very vertical. If we look at it from the side, you can see how I'm not radiating my stems out and keeping that very 
solid structure there in the middle. For me, I think one of the hardest skills to attain in this for this arrangement is to balance off your material on the top. So if we've got something that's fairly thin and spindly on this side, we need to consider that we don't have too much heavy material on this side. So we need to sort of balance off the visual balance of the arrangement. These are bulrushes, gorgeous straight bulrushes. And just to speed up the process of filming the video, I've already cut those to a little bit longer than my container. And the reason I've done that length and not the same length as this is because I went varying heights. If we think of nature, if you think of a herbaceous border and flowers and growing in the garden, they don't all finish off at the same height. And as our eye travels away from the base of the arrangement, we want ideally for our materials to very casually and very naturally fall away. So two placements in so far. Now with a vertical, sorry, with a parallel design like this, traditionally here in the UK, we like to fill in every gap and we don't like to see any negative space. But in a parallel design like this, there should be clear gaps in between each material. So don't overfill it and don't overcrowd, which sometimes when we've, you know, when you've spent years learning how to make a design and you've learned how to make a specific shape and cover every gap and cover every hole, it's quite hard sometimes to now think about leaving gaps within your flowers. Now my first flower type is going to be the gladioli and I, ideally, I think I would like to have had three of these, but um, they came in a mixed bench with other flowers and there were only two stems in there. But what I really liked about the gladioli, not only are they fabulous linear shapes, so they give me great parallel lines, but I felt that almost citrusy yellow went really well with my sunflower. So the colour for me on the outside of the sunflower really connects well with the gladioli and that it's of course rhythm and repetition and, and that's quite important in floral design. Now you might be looking at these and thinking Sharon that doesn't look anything like a sunflower. Well the petals have matured, they weren't looking particularly attractive but the centre of my sunflower is, is perfectly good to use. There's a beautiful colour link between the birch twigs and between the dark base so again, I have rhythm and repetition. And as a rounded shape at the base of my arrangement, it's really going to cover a large piece of my floral foam and bring some interest in shape and color down to the bottom. And it's really, really going to connect so well with the almost acid yellow of the gladioli on that side. So I quite often comment, you know, if I feel a design could improve and for me the improvement on this design would be to have a little bit more gladioli on this side here but I can't do anything about that today. I'm working with the materials that I've got and I wanted quite a simple stylized design so maybe the two gladioli are going to work better than a, a bigger group and I love feedback, I love comments. If you want to make a suggestion in the bottom, in the comment section, you can tell me whether you like it or whether you dislike it. Now the glad, the, no it's not a gladioli, the sunflower was on a short stem because I've used it in a previous design and I wanted to gain some height with it. And because it's drying and I'm going to probably use these again later in the year, I've, I'm not worried whether the flower is actually in water because it's going to dry perfectly well out of water. So what I've done to give me some height is I've added in the bottom a kebab stick. Quite simple, quite effective and that will help me raise that lovely sunflower and give me some extra height. Before I do the videos for YouTube I quite often plan in my head where I think the flowers are going to go. So I knew I needed to raise that up and have a little bit more height. But now that very citrusy, almost an acid yellowy green is transformed and it's coming through the design from one side to the other. 
we've got a connection between the browns and the sort of almost black color of my container and hopefully we've got a very rhythmic line running from one side to the other now at the beginning you saw me show you some vegetables and I have used vegetables in one of the parallel designs once before and you can pop back and have a look at that. And when I run classes here in the studio, everybody thinks I'm a bit nuts while I suggest they go out and buy vegetables. But if you think about it, if you've got a vegetable patch at home, you might have interest in seed heads from your onions. The texture of a garlic or the shape of a spring onion works really well. And if you haven't got the budget to buy flowers, then maybe using some vegetables, some fruits, some leaves like cabbage leaves work beautifully in an arrangement. Then it'll help broaden your horizons and give you some new shapes and new textures to work with. And again, I think the colour link with the sunflower and that gladioli works really well. And what I've done here with my trusty kebab sticks, I've just inserted them into the base of my sunflower. No, it's not a sunflower, into the base of my leek. So that I have an anchor point and that will sit quite comfortably on my right hand side. Now, because I have that horizontal movement with the structured ivy root, I've got to be quite mindful of where I'm placing the material because I have to fit it in between the gaps of the ivy root. So if we look at this one, I've obviously only got these sections here where I can place flowers. So think about that before you start. Now we're going to introduce our parsnips and this time I've used some German pins on the bottom just really to show you two different methods. This time I call them German pins, but they're often known as Mossin pins as well. I've inserted the sharp end and that will allow me to come in from the side. Instead of placing it in from the top, like I've done with the leeks, because, let me show you the two of them together, because I've come in from the side, I can now insert that one into the foam from the side. So if I turn this round, I'm just slightly gonna move it over. Now I'm working in reverse here, so this might not work first time, but I'm aiming for that to sit nicely in that position again we've got those lovely vertical lines possibly looking in the camera screen it's too close to the sunflower but we'll move it in just a second so placing them in from the side you put your support sticks from the side and this one is going to come in from the top in that sort of manner now i've got a section of parallel parsnips that was a bit of a mouthful parallel parsnips the color again those creams and that citrusy lemon is really blending well together right so my next material is going to be some wheat and again i thought of that autumn feel that harvest sort of impression and this time i grouped them together in a bunch and tied it with some raffia so that i've got a really pretty finish um, and it makes it look neater and far tidier in the design. Again, this paler cream is a beautiful link with the colour of my horizontal ivy root. It's a lovely link between the colour of my parsnips. So your colour steps from one side of the arrangement to the other. It links really lovely with my parallel placement of Oh, what are they called? My brain's gone blank. Bulrushes. I can imagine you're all there shouting at me saying, it's a bulrush, Aaron, it's a bulrush. Okay, now to connect this side of the arrangement to this side, I've now made a small little bunch of the wheat. This one has been placed on a wire. And again, that means I can come in from the front of the floral foam. So if I want to put it in this position, the wire is strong enough to support my piece of wheat in that upright position. Now I'm going to introduce another dried material and you'll probably be really familiar with these. These are lotus seed heads. You can buy them in this manner in packets already dried. They're wonderful for Christmas wreaths. I've picked them again because of the colour. There's a lovely link with the colour of my sunflower. It's a round shape so we have repetition of shapes as, rep as well as repetition of colour. But it's quite a hard textured material so I get a completely different texture 
to introduce into the arrangement. You can also buy these fresh. You would probably have to go to a specialist florist and when they're fresh, they're a wonderful shade of green. And what I'm going to do with these is place one on the end so it's facing forward so we get that nice round shape and I'm going to put the other two upwards alongside my um, leeks. So what I'm doing is arranging them so that we have different heights in the arrangement which is called recession. It gives the design depth so that it the design doesn't appear flat. What I haven't done at the moment is added any material to the back and I insist every time I do a video that you create depth from front to back but what I have done is stepped all the material forward so we have a front and a back but what I will do is bring some foliage towards the back in just a second to finish the design off. I just slightly moved the sunflower just to flatten it down a little bit because it was very close to the other two round lotus heads. But for a minute, that's all I'm going to add into here because I don't want to overfill the negative space in between the flowers. But what I do need to do is cover my base. And what I've got to cover the base is a selection of foliage. The camellia I've already cut into short sections just really to speed up this process. And we still need to arrange these in a parallel fashion. So rather than radiating them out from a center point, I'm going to sit them on top of one another so they have parallel horizontal lines. And these are going to work towards the front of my arrangement. We don't want to spoil it now at this stage by overfilling and putting too many materials in at the base. And I have recut all these stems just off camera before we started. Uh, I started this section. So please don't think if you're watching from home, I haven't cut these materials because I have. So I've done a cluster here. So we're repeating clusters, repeating groups. And I've just added some at the side so we get a little bit of strength on the width of the arrangement. Then to contrast against the very flat leaf of my clematis, not a clematis, it's a camellia. Camellia conifer, two very different textures. This is flat and shiny. This is feathery and softer in its appearance, but it's going to give a lovely texture. And again, I'm not going to do that radial position. I'm going to lay them on top of one another, almost like steps. If you think of stairs and how the positions of those stairs lay, this technique is called layering. And we're going to layer the different types of greenery on top of one another. And what I'll do in just a second is I'm going to finish it off with some flat moss because I don't want to overfill the base. Right, so we're gonna bring some out at the side as well. It's not a symmetrical design, so it doesn't matter if one side is slightly longer than the other. We're not trying to achieve that perfect symmetry like we do with traditional floral design. And if you were going to do this for a church, you can make a really impressive design by laying them out in a line alongside one another. You could use them in front of the altar on the floor. You could even use them down the aisle so that you have this thin, very striking selection of floral designs running the length of the aisle. And we often see that in wedding work, you know, created by florists. Okay, so we'll just add a little bit more of the camellia. What I've tried to do here is alternate the foliage. So we have the flat texture of the camellia alongside the more fussy foliage of the conifer. And now my design has more depth. It has an obvious front because it's a front facing design. Now I'm going to introduce some of the moss. Right, okay, so I've got a little box here of moss. And this is just sphagnum moss that we often use in hanging baskets, in Christmas wreaths. It could be tillandsia, it could be reindeer moss, but this is something that's native here to the UK. And I'm going to use the German pins. So going back to the pin that I used to hold the parsnips into place, I'm just gonna use these to secure the moss into position. And I'm gonna work my way round 
making sure that I don't have any floral foam visible and I've got small amounts of the moss just tucked in and hiding any gaps that I might have. Again this one is a lovely colour link, it's um, a sandy coloured moss. If it was fresh moss it might be a little bit more greener but this is one that I keep here and I use on a fairly regular basis so it's lost its colour a little bit. If you don't have the moss like I have just used more foliage but avoid overfilling and putting in too many materials at the base because it becomes a little bit scruffy and a bit untidy. Right so one small little bit of moss there under my sunflower. Let's try and get a little bit just in that section there and I think we're pretty much finished. Move that out of the way, spin that around. So what do we think? I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please comment in the box below. I love to know where you're watching me from. If you've got any questions, then please add that in the box below. If you want any information about any courses, then email me on sharondower at hotmail.com. And I look forward to seeing you for our next tutorial. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>